السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى ونتجد حديث نمبر 50 which is the last حديث in uh, the continuation of the 40 حديث 40 حديث وإمام النووي رحمه الله and the next 10 to 50 is by Ibn Rajab رحمه الله in his book جمع علم الحكم so this is the last one uh, in this uh, subject, inshallah ta'ala, the 50th hadith. And this hadith is in the subject of a dhikr Subject of a dhikr dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how Ibn uh, Rajab rahimahullah, he made this the last hadith because that's basically what is uh, one of the great benefits of all of what is mentioned and how a person reaches the highest levels if that becomes his way of life is to be always in the state of the dhikr of Allah to be in constant remembrance of Allah to the last moment of one's life this is the means to be saved from the punishment of Allah and to reach the highest levels of rewards is to be among those who make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kathiran frequent dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise the believers وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كَثِيرًا Mark وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Males and females أذكروا الله كَثِيرًا Remember remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot and let's first start with the hadith and because of the time that the subject of the dhikr is a very uh, long subject and it's an important one because it's as long as our days and nights uh, first of all, the hadith, as you see, عن, عن عبد الله بن بسر رضي الله عنه قال أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رجل A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله إن شرائع الإسلام قد كثرت علينا That O Messenger of Allah, the شرائع of Islam The many شرائع is the plural of sharia The ways of Islam, the rulings of Islam قد كثرت علينا has been, it's been a lot on us a lot of rulings, a lot of things. فَبَابٌ نَتَمَسَّكُ بِهِ جَامِعٌ فَبَابٌ نَتَمَسَّكُ بِهِ جَامِعٌ Give me a bab, a, a door or a gate or a subject basically in this context. Uh, one of these uh, means in the sharia ah that I would hold to it. Jami'ah, that means uh, very comprehensive. Means if I have it, I would get all of these rulings of the deen of Islam. He said, قَالْ لَا يَزَالُ لِسَانُكَ رَطْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He said to him, make sure that your tongue is always wet, fresh from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the narration of Imam Ahmad. This hadith by itself has great benefits. And the subject of a dhikr is something that needs to be discussed, of course. But this man, when he came and he asked the Prophet وسلم, such a question, he was not asking to get something... Uh, to relieve him from the many rulings or the many orders of Allah uh, as some people might think uh, to get less actions or less adherence to the deen of Allah no he's saying that since there are so many rulings so many different things in the deen of Allah tell me something to make it easy for me to be upon all of this this is basically what he's asking he said, comprehensive, that would make it easy for the rest of the deen of Allah for a person to be upon. Also, it means that tell me something that I would do uh, because the many different rulings in the deen of Islam, this can relate to some people and not others. Like some of the rulings that relate to people that would do jihad fi sabillah, or a person making hajj, or a, a ruler, something specific to specific situations. So what is something that is more comprehensive that covers all of these aspects that you know a person can do uh, and he can have all of these means together. And that's why when, uh, when they were um, uh, asked, uh, which is explanation of the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, that the best thing is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they said that the best of those who make salah are those who make more dhikr. The best of those who make hajj are those who make more dhikr in the hajj. The best of those who make jihad are those who make more dhikr in jihad, and so on. 
So the best of all of the actions that the believers they do in their acts of worship are the most among them that make dhikr of Allah. So that's why uh, it's a very comprehensive thing that covers everything, all aspects of matters of deen. You would find the best people that will be in any act of worship are those who are in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he said, لا يزال رسالك رطبا يا ذكر الله. Always make your lisan or your tongue رطبا. الرطب is when something is fresh, when something is wet. Like they call the rutab or the dates when it's wet, when it's fresh. Uh, not the dry one. Uh, they call it rutab. So that means it's still fresh. So don't. that means keep constantly making dhikr of Allah. Don't make yourself or your tongue dry from the dhikr of Allah. Always make a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why one of the definitions of a taqwa, a taqwa haqqa tuqati, to obey Allah the way he ought to be obeyed. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu alayhi said, and you ta'a fala yu'asa, that Allah is to be obeyed and not to be disobeyed. Wa yudhkara fala yunsa, and to be remembered and not to be forgotten. Wa yushkara fala yukfar, and to be grateful to and not to be ungrateful to him. So to make remembrance of Allah is not once in a while for the Muslim. It's a constant act of worship. If he doesn't with his tongue, his, his heart is constantly making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be in that state of forgetfulness, it's a, it's a bad thing. So to always be in busy with one's heart, with one's tongue, with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make constant dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how to achieve that is by following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. When we look into the Qur'an, we would find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayu ladhina amanu dhkurullaha dhikran kathira. You who believe, make remembrance of Allah dhikran kathira. Many times, not just once in a while. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the opposite of it. He said, "Wa la taqunu kaladina nasu Allah fa ansahum anfusahum." Do not be like those who forget Allah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made them forget themselves. So when a person forgets Allah, he forgets himself. How can he forget himself? That means he doesn't do what is benefiting for himself. Someone becomes lousy. Someone that would ruin himself. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made the success conditioned on the dhikr of Allah, as He said, "Subhanahu wa Taala, wa dhkur Allah kathiran." لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kathiran. And there's always the order to make dhikr kathiran, frequently, a lot, not just little. Because the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned the hypocrites, mentioned that some of the, one of the characteristics of the hypocrites, that they only remember Allah little. They don't, like, do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. They just do it, but not frequent as the believers. They don't. They only remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very little. Uh, so success is depending on the dhikr of Allah, praising the believers as we heard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also you know, warned us not to make our wealth or our children make us uh, deviated away or distracted from the dhikr of Allah. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Wa man yaf'al dhalika fa'ulaikum al-khasirun. We will believe, do not make your wealth or your offspring. Tulhikum, and ilha is to be uh, busy with something, to be distracted from the dhikr of Allah. And whoever do this, they are the loser ones. Right? And the verses talked about those at the moment of their death, and they would say, oh Allah, return me back. So the, the point here is, our wealth is important, our family is important, of course, and they're part of being obedient to Allah to take care of them, but not to make them make you distracted from the dhikr of Allah, from the obligations. And the dhikr of Allah is the salah, is the obligations, is the obedience to Allah, is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. And there is nothing more virtue in any act of worship uh, than a verse in the Qur'an that talks about those who make remembrance of Allah. Something that, uh, if a person reflects upon it, there's nothing more virtue than this. When a person have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he hears about this, that would get him to take all the means to make among to be among those who make remembrance of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fadkuruni adhkurkum. Ushkuru li wala takfuru. Right? Fadkuruni, 
So remember me, I will remember you. Now, there's nothing more beautiful than this. To be remembered by Allah. Meaning to be mentioned by Allah. Those who mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in a better gathering, the better gathering of the angels. Those who make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention him to himself. Exactly the same way, but nothing is the like of Allah. So this is, uh, by itself, is one of the most beautiful things that can ever happen to someone. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ So when a person understands this, reflect upon this, if it has its right position in the heart of the believers, the, the, the effect of that to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ We would see how much we waste in our life without making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the dunya mal'una, as the Prophet sallallahu said, this dunya is cursed. Mal'unun ma fiha. All of it is cursed. Illa dhikrullah ma wala. Except the dhikr of Allah and what helps the person to make dhikr of Allah. So the things that helps the person to make the dhikr of Allah is a good thing. Other than that, anything that makes a person forgetful of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not a good thing. And with ilm, with knowledge, of course, a person would, uh, would get to understand the importance of this. That's why when people think, well, my work distracts me, my family distracts me, it shouldn't. And a person should struggle with himself to do the acts of worship and the obligations. And uh, part of being distracted, if a person commits a sin, if a person neglects his salah, delays his salah, things of that nature. And to follow the way the Prophet ﷺ, to make the adhkar that the Prophet ﷺ would do every day, that makes a person among those who make remembrance of Allah frequently. The morning, the evening, that's something that never should ever, never be missed. A hundred times of la ilaha illallah wa la sharika la ilaha mulk wa la in the morning and in the evening and the rest of the athkar, the athkar after the salah. And that's the optional, so that's the recommended athkar. So then the obligation is even more important than the salawat al-khams, what is being said in the salah, the sunnah prayers, the night prayer. The recitation of the Quran every day. Yeah, so the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the best uh, the best acts of worship. And uh, that's why the, the the salah itself, you know, it has two great benefits, as Shaykh Sam Tamir rahimahullah he said. One is that it prevents the person from al fahsha wal munkar, as the ayah says, and it also has the dhikr of Allah. In the salah tanha al fahsha wal munkar. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that the salah prevents the person from making fahsha and mukha falling into the sins. And akbar. And what's greater than that, that the salah itself is having, having the dhikr of Allah in it. And that's akbar. That's greater than the fact that the salah prevents the person, protects the person from the fahsha and the mukha. So the salah and the virtue of the salah because of the dhikr of Allah. The end of every action, we make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanak Allahumma rabbana bihamni ishadu an la ilaya anta astaghfuruka tubu ilayk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he praised the believers, he said, Al-lazina adhkaruna Allah qiyama wa qu'uda wa ala junubin. Those who make remembrance of Allah standing, laying down on their sides, right? To be present with every act of worship, wa aqimu salata li dhikri, and so on. So this is, if we talk about the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, the, every action that we do is the dhikr of Allah. It has the dhikr of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, when they were traveling uh, to the, in the path of the, the road of, to Mecca, and there was a, a mountain, as he mentioned here, this also in the, in the Sharh. As you see in the middle of the Sharh, Jabal, a mountain called Jumdan. So he said, Siru hadha Jumdan. They said, he said to them, walk, this is Jumdan, this is the mountain Jumdan. Qad sabaqal mufarridun. The mufarridun had surpassed everyone. So uh, he said, qal alladhina yuhtaruna fi dhikri allahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Awad dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakir. Those who make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently. Uh, those are the ones that surpasses everyone. They are they surpassed everyone in matters of the dhikr. So uh, there's nothing again more virtue than this. And I'm going through the sharh to see some of the narrations that he mentioned. Say do a lot of the baqiyat al-salihad, but stays with the person righteous ones. They asked the Prophet, he said, at takbiru wa tasbihu wa tahleel. 
to say Allahu Akbar, to say Subhanallah, to say La ilaha illallah, to say Alhamdulillah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. So this is uh, something that we need to be uh, really uh, upon and to. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَالْبَيْتُ الَّذِي لَا يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مَثَلُ الْحَيُّ وَالْمَيْتِ the like of the house that the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in it versus the house that the name of Allah is not mentioned in it is like the the, the life and the death. Uh, so some houses are like graves because the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there. And the houses where the remembrance of Allah, salah is being prayed, option of salah, uh, people making salah on time, making remembrance of Allah, reading call, and these are the blessed houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Uh, and uh, the, the, again, the, the best or the most virtue in every act of worship are those who make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that he ends his book with this book of dhikr and how to make this adhkar the way the Prophet sallallahu and to be constantly making dhikr of Allah and to have the awrad the everyday portion of the Qur'an to be recited and the adhkar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and the salah on the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and the like of this and not to waste one's life because one of the things that people would regret after they depart from this life is the waste in ghafla and not making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the easy ibadah, uh, even though it's on the heart, it's a person sees the tawfiq, the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not all the time the person is helped but it's a normal thing for the human beings to feel overwhelmed sometimes or to feel tired or to feel bored or something like this, but to re- re- renew our energy, to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do the, uh, the acts of, uh, of ibadah and dhikr. One of the things that he mentioned, meaning Ibn Rajab in the explanation of this hadith, uh, he said the wadha'if al-dhikr. The wadifa, the time where the person makes dhikr and dhikr in the day and the night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Muslims to make remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day and night five times. To establish the salawat in its prescribed times. And he also made for these fara'id nafila, optional acts of worship, to increase more than the five daily salah. One of which is from the salah itself, like to pray before or after the salah, the sunan salah, the 12 rak'ah sunnah, and so on, and four rak'ah before Asr, you may Allah have mercy on someone that prays four rak'ah before Asr, and so on. So this is from the salah itself, and that fixes the obligations and perfect it. And uh, the different salawat of an nawafil is to be uh, for a person to know them, salatul duha, salatul layl, qiyamul layl, and the different types of salawat like this. Uh, and the times where the salah is permissible versus the times where the salah is not permissible, meaning the optional salah. And all of these uh, times and the hadith that talks about it and the virtue of it, this is something that we need to really be upon and to always remind ourselves uh, to be upon the worship of Allah and the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, at these times. Uh, so this is the dhikr like this from the salah itself. And there is the adhkar, there is with one's speech. Uh, so waiting for the salah in the masjid, uh, you know, uh, making uh, adhkar in the morning and the evening before going to sleep, waking up at night, uh, waking up in general, uh, and uh, things of that nature. And that's again to follow the way the Prophet And as far as what a person is doing during the day or during the night of worldly matters, livelihood matters, things that we need to do, work, cleaning, whatever that is. Right? All of that, still the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be established to one's best ability. right? And that's why before we eat, after we finish eating, before you drink, before you put your clothes on, even when a person uh, have relations with his wife or enter his house or to, or to leave or to enter the bathroom, you would, when you find all of the different states that a person is in, there's a dhikr from the Prophet to, uh, to say. And to, sp- to speak what is good and when it rains, when you travel, you know, all kinds of ways where a person is recommended for him to say always oh, dhikr, not to be in state of forgetfulness. And to say the dhikr in general, subhanAllah, bihamd, subhanAllah, al uh, to say subhanAllah as many times that a person can, alhamdulillah, and so on. Uh, 
uh, to remember the afkar. And that's why we should always remember these afkar and to memorize them uh, and to uh, think about them and to have them in our hearts and to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is also part of the dhikr, and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from his uh, bounties uh, and the times of the salawat in the sujood and after the, uh, the tashahud and the like of this. So all kinds of means for success in slavery and hereafter, it should be done when a person knows have the proper aqidah, proper belief, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly purifying ourselves for with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the more the person make dhikr of Allah, the more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of his needs and will bless his time. And uh, many times we need to to have to be less concerned and to be more involved in ibadah. And uh, you would find yourself either overthinking about matters that doesn't really bring any benefits for the person versus to make dhikr of Allah. Yes, we have to think and make decisions and make istikhara and so on. But to overdo it, this is one of the ways of shaitan. The Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ, whenever a matter concerns him, he would overthinking it, he would sit and think and stress himself. No, he would he would rush to the salah. So this is something that needs to be done with our life and our dealing with things. That is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to waste our time with the remembrance of others or human beings or ghibah and namima or uh, looking at you know screen time that uh, increases every day and things where people that there's no benefit for him to read or things that are foolish or find himself once addicted to all kinds of things. And it's really, as mentioned before, one of the things that really... Um, I want to say shocked me when I saw it. When, but when you read about the early generations of Islam, Rabbi Mr. Sulaiman, when he, when he said, كُلَّمَا دَخَلْتُ عَلَى الشَّافِعِي Every time I enter on the Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i, رَأَيْتُ الْمُصْحَفْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ I would find the Mus'haf, the Qur'an, between his hands. You know, that means he's, he's always looking into the Mus'haf with his ilm, with his knowledge, and so on. So nowadays, what happens when you, every time, we look at one another. What are we doing? We're having our phones in our hands. And it's amazing, it's uh, when you read this hadith before, these uh, phones and how it invaded everything in our life, you would say, how can that happen? How can someone always, every time he enters on him, he sees him with the mushaf in his hand. We see how reality that is, and how was our life before there were phones. You know, and the ghafla continued in a different way. But that means it's feasible for a person to, to make dhikr of Allah, to make remembrance of Allah. But it's the shaitan that takes away from the human beings anything or any means of goodness that he can take from them, he will try, will try his best. So the call here is to organize our time and to be concerned about what's benefiting for us and to put everything in the right perspective and not to leave ourselves like this with everything nowadays pulls us away if we're not aware and conscious of what, where our time is. Like, for example, if a person leaves himself to what he sees on the phone, it's an endless scroll, right? Endless. There's, not, there's no end to it. And they intentionally did it this way. So that people are in that constant addiction and ghafla and to be, you know, in total submission to what is being seen and read and whether it's good or evil, whatever there is. So, but for a Muslim, the matter is different. We should fix times for things and put things, the objectives of our lives and the salah and the dhikr and the ibadah and reading Qur'an and memorizing Qur'an and worldly matters, livelihood matters, being busy with studying, with work or whatever there is. And having so much less of these other things that is no benefit to it unless it's benefiting. Yes, there's great benefits for those who would use it in a benefiting way and not to waste our time in matters that does not bring any benefit to us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reality of it and, um, and to be among those who benefit from what is being said. Uh, so I'll stop here, inshallah ta'ala. And the subject is a detailed one, of course, as we know, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who make remembrance of Allah constantly, all the time, and to guide us to say, La ilaha illallah, before we depart from this life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.